Hi guys, as you can see I've now got lots of little miniatures um, and yeah I absolutely love painting these now and I'm pretty much painting well some figures every day which is a far cry from how I felt well about a year ago I used to hate painting um, and especially miniatures but I think now because I am painting miniatures that I'm going to be using I want to display and show off um, I'm probably taking more care over them and just sort of trying to improve techniques and well obviously have fun with it it's the main thing but um, yeah I'm, I'm loving the figures I'm loving how they're coming out and yeah I am painting every day which is pretty awesome but obviously as you all know I've not got a big property so I need somewhere to store these little fellas because I am getting so many and I've got loads more to paint so I decided to make some sort of storage display unit basically that's exactly what I did as I don't have a large workshop or work area I can't really sort of use big sort of sheets of, uh, of wood um, so I've got some sort of thin plywood and this stuff is great because it was easy to cut down so that's exactly what I did I cut it down so I could obviously make a kind of like a box sort of shape and then using the good old Gorilla Glue um, this is kind of my go-to glue now um, yeah I used to love obviously the super glue and obviously cement glue but uh, yeah this Gorilla Glue is just great because it seems to sort of glue anything to anything so I'm using the Gorilla Glue that expands just because this will help fill in any sort of gaps and obviously I put sort of masking tape around the whole thing just to sort of keep it in place while uh, well, while it was sort of curing or drying and the plan is to obviously have different sort of shelves I can put figures on um, so I'm going to have the bottom shelf as being sort of the higher one to get the uh, the bigger figures in and then I'm going to have two middle shelves for these sort of normal sized figures and I'm going to have the top shelf which will be a bit smaller and that's where obviously the dwarves, halflings and basically anything little can go in and then it's just a case of gluing in all the uh, well kind of shelves really so yeah, so this plywood stuff really is good to use, really uh, easy to cut, and I was using it with a, uh, well cutting it with a scalpel. Uh, so yeah, it just shows us how easy it is. But it is quite firm and strong though, which is awesome. So there we go, it's looking good. And now I've 3D printed these sort of base plates, as I want to have these figures so they can sort of sit in the little recess, so they don't sort of obviously fall out. Um, plus once they are in there, you won't see the base as much, which will look pretty cool. So yeah, these are things, I, I basically I made these up. Um, I went on Thingiverse, got some sort of cobblestone flooring and then basically made the nice thin sort of pattern and made obviously a hole in the centre. As I didn't want it to look like the sort of plain shelving, I want to have sort of a backdrop on it. So I'm using the foam board and I'm using these 3D printed rollers. Um, a whole variety of looks. Again, these are on Thingiverse and yeah, the patterns come out really well. So yeah, these are pretty awesome. So I've got about six or seven I think. Um, all different sort of stone effects um, and yeah they obviously a very quick way of putting stone effects or even flooring effects on your phone board rather than obviously doing what I was doing before which was like drawing out a pattern and then scoring it with uh, my pen uh, which kind of took a long time I didn't mind doing it because obviously it was fun it was relaxing uh, but the fact that this does it so much quicker and say I've got about six or seven of these different rollers so they all have different effects uh, which is pretty cool. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Each one of these um, sort of floor levels, I'm going to do a different roll pattern on it. Um, just because I want to see basically which one I kind of prefer. So when I do more sort of dungeons, I can sort of think, oh yeah, that's the sort of flooring or ceiling or wall sort of effect I want to go for. Which is pretty cool. And again, using these doors, I mean, you're going to see these doors in a lot of the builds I do. Just because, I, I well, I love them. I love these doors. got a nice little see, stone effect on the outside. And the, uh, the wooden effect, it really does have a very grainy, uh, sort of, well, rough wooden look, which is pretty cool. So again, obviously 3D printing, um, using the Anycubic Photon Mono, which I absolutely adore. Um, I believe they have got a new printer coming out soon, and I'm going to be getting one. I think it's a 6K version. Um, don't hold me to that, I don't know a whole lot about what's, what's happening. But yeah, I am going to be getting a new printer from Anycubic um, sometime in the next sort of month or so. And again, yeah, this, this is something else, obviously, I, I just love using good old grout. Uh, or for the Americans out there, spackle, I believe this is called. Um, and yeah, this stuff is just awesome. Because obviously it fills in any gaps and cracks, but it's also great for texturing. And in this case, I'm using it just for sort of the rough wall and the uh, the ceiling there. And to use it, as I say, for filling in gaps. So obviously these panels that I printed out, um, obviously I can only print them out so big. So they're in sort of I think three sections I did. So obviously in the gaps in between, it's just a case of putting a bit of, bit of grout there. 
So I've added an extra little bit on the front of these, and the main reason for that is obviously to make the shelves look a bit thicker and deeper, uh, which looks pretty cool. But also because I want to light this up. Um, obviously, when the figures are in here, they are going to be sort of shaded from the shelf above. So my plan at the end is to fix some lights in there, and that's exactly what I do. And obviously, you'll be seeing that in just a second. So yeah, I'm, so I'm loving to say the 3D printed parts are just so cool because it really does mean I can print them out to whatever size I want. And I, I kind of find that more important than actually what I'm printing. Because um, obviously you can go out and buy bits and pieces to sort of fill in your, your dungeons and your terrains and all that sort of stuff. But to be able to print them out the size you want them and need them, um, yeah, I think is pretty awesome. So just to cover this, uh, rather than spraying this, because obviously I want to try and get into all the nooks and crannies, I'm going to paint it as a combination of just PVA and then I think it's just like a brownish kind of paint. Um, it does take a lot longer though using the brush rather than the aerosol. Um, and I must admit I didn't appreciate just how long it was going to take me as it really did take a long time to paint this. Um, but obviously the paint's a lot cheaper than the aerosol so that, that's one sort of thing and as I say I do like value for money. Um, so yeah as much as I like using the aerosols when this is so much cheaper, <laughs> this is definitely a way to go. And yeah, just in case, obviously painting everything. I mean, this is more for the foam, really, uh, because that's the main thing that if you paint on afterwards, it, some of the paints can dissolve into it. So just covering it with a PVA obviously helps put a, a nice bond over the top. And yeah, then it's just a case of going over that with some more paint. So I did initially think that I was going to leave the, the front edge of this, um, sort of like the brownish dark colour. So it would look like sort of mud and stuff underneath the, um, the stones. Uh, but once I'd painted this all with the, uh, well, bit of, it's kind of the combination of dry brushing and normal brushing. Um, so I don't know what that's called. Is that just called like middle brushing? I'm not sure. Not dry, not wet, middle. Who knows? Making things up now. Um, yeah, so I did mask it all off and then painted it. And I thought, no, I think I'd, I'd rather the edge looked the same. So as you can see, I just went over the, uh, the edges with a bit more medium brushing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so there's not really a lot of paint or different colours in, in this. Obviously there's a few bits where the doors are obviously all nice and brown. And there's a bit of gold on the uh, the frames and a bit of silver on the, the candle bits. Um, so yeah, it's so relatively easy to paint this. And once that was all dry, getting out one of my favourite things to do, and that's good old washes. Just because these do really make things sort of pop and look more realistic basically. So rather than obviously the flat looking paint that's there, do a bit of a uh, bit of a wash over it. It fills in the darker areas or the sort of the nooks and crannies with the darker sort of pigment. Um, and yeah, especially with the wood effect as well, it just makes it look more grainier, if that's such a word. So yeah, really pleased with how washes sort of come out. Uh, yeah, and then the last sort of thing to do really was uh, put some little pictures. I mean, you'll have seen in one of my recent uh, videos for my Tomb of Horrors sort of uh, set that I've been making. Uh, one of the rooms does have these um, these sort of golden frames, and then there's a variety of kind of medieval looking um, sort of canvases. So obviously that's nice and easy to do. Just print some uh, some things out and basically pop them on the inside. And that's pretty much it. So I'm really pleased with how sort of the shelving looks. Um, yeah, it works really well. Figures fit in nicely. But as you can see, it's quite dark in some areas. So having these little lights should light it up nicely. So I've gone ahead and made some holes in this. Again, this is plywood, so it really is easy to make holes in it. And then it's just a case of feeding through the little LEDs. Um, I am pleased with how this came out, but these LEDs, as much as they're reasonably bright, I would have uh, preferred them to be even brighter. So I might look into some, some different sort of lights for the next time. And even though these lights are used or powered by sort of batteries, big batteries rather than little batteries, they're still not uh, as bright as I'd have, as I'd have liked. And obviously, yeah, another sort of <laughs> use or type of glue that I use, although it's not really a glue, is the uh, the UV resin, which I still haven't used for what its purpose really is. Um, I do kind of use it as a quick fix for gluing, just because obviously you put a little bit on, like you can see, get the UV light, put that over, and then it dries rock hard, sort of plastic, uh, within seconds, which is pretty cool. But I say I really do need to use this UV resin for its intended purpose, which is obviously to make sort of like water effects, basically, uh, which I might do one day, but hey ho. And now that is it uh, all complete, and well, one last thing to do, basically, and that's all the figures. Let's get them in place. Um, so, so I, I love the fact that they do the, uh, the little recess areas, just because the figures do sort of slot into it nicely, and it also means when I move this around, 
they won't sort of move around and fall out. And obviously it sort of spaces them out rather nicely. And I say, you, you can just about see obviously the bases, but it does sort of hide them a little bit uh, being recessed in. So yeah, big, big uh, models, medium models, and little models at the top. So yeah, really pleased about this looks. And I'm going to make some more of these, because obviously I'm going to have a lot more figures made soon. But I think I'm, the next one I make, I might make it look like a, a jungle kind of theme. And have it obviously, well, trees and bark and all that kind of stuff. So the figures are in, and there we go, lights are on. So yeah, definitely pleased with how this, this all looks. So as I say, the lights aren't bad, but I would like to get some stronger ones next time. So if any of you guys have done anything with, uh, with lights in sort of dioramas or shelving units or anything like that, uh, let me know in the comments and I can go check them out and maybe use them in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my patrons as well as the sponsors for helping making it possible for me to sort of keep making these videos and obviously buying the materials I need to build stuff. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.